Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to have your HTML document be able to auto refresh itself. So this can be a very valuable thing if you're going to be creating a real time dashboards and you want to make sure your users are getting the most current information. Basically, having the web page be able to auto refresh itself can be very valuable. So uh, if your your HTML document is showing information about what's going on with your systems, so basically. Maybe Maybe your servers or any other kind of computer system is sending information into your web application and you want that page to show what's going on with your infrastructure, then having it auto refresh itself, make sure that the people, uh, your users know what the current situation is. Again, one of the big problems that you can run into with end users when you create uh, any kind of dashboard type system is sometimes they, they don't they don't they don't get around to uh, refreshing the page on their own right they open the page everything looks good they go, go get some coffee they talk with people and you know hey the page everything's fine look the, the page the page you know the dashboard is showing us everything is fine with our systems the problem is is when they loaded up that particular web page everything was fine with the systems and then 10 minutes later everything went to hell but if that page doesn't get refreshed, then they don't know what the current situation is. There are some plugins out there, either for Chrome or Firefox, where you can add uh, basically an auto refresh component into the browser itself. But then again, it's in the browser. You have to worry about it failing or not working properly, so on and so forth. So by simply having your HTML document be able to uh, auto refresh itself, that can be a very useful thing for the dashboard. So with that, this is a pretty simple deal. So I'll go over. I will show you a demonstration. I've created a little, uh, basically just a, a timestamp type demonstration. So every five seconds, the timestamp is going to update. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, then we'll go over and take a look at the code uh, and show you how simple this is. So here we are at my demonstration computer. Uh, the computer does not matter itself. All I need is a web browser that can connect back to my web server at 10.0.1.10. And then I've created a script called autoupdate.php. Now you'll notice this is a PHP script. This is not for the HTML itself. Uh, the reason it's a PHP script is I needed something that would actually be dynamic and would update, right? So basically that's the thing. So you have HTML and then within the HTML, you can have your job script you can have your PHP script you can have your Python script whatever else so for this particular example all I'm doing is simply echoing out a PHP timestamp and I've set it to go every five seconds uh, so here basically we can see this is what the timestamp is uh, if we wait a couple of seconds it will then it is now updated and so basically this is just simply showing you every five seconds it re updates it basically refreshes the page when it refreshes the page that timestamp that time function uh, is triggered again in PHP and then we simply echo out what the new timestamp is so so don't worry about this in particular again you can dump whatever code you want to into the page the important thing is that you're seeing that it's auto refreshing so with that let's go over and take a look at the code so here's our code for this particular project. Now, again, with this, uh, the server really doesn't matter. The code editor doesn't matter. Not, not much matters. This is, this is basically just a core function of HTML. Uh, so don't overthink this at all. Uh, here, what we have in the body, all this is, is, again, this is our simple, this is our PHP script. And literally all this is doing is spitting out a timestamp. So this, this is where you would put whatever code uh, that you would want to have triggered whenever this page auto refreshes. Again, maybe, Maybe you'd be going back and grabbing information out of a MySQL database, or maybe you'd be gra grabbing information from uh, some other data source uh, in your infrastructure. So basically all we're doing here is we're simply echoing out a timestamp, but this could be much, obviously a much more sophisticated script. Uh, what makes the auto refresh uh, function work is simply this up here. So you have the HTML, uh, you open up the head, and then within the head, you're actually going to give metadata. So nowadays in the modern world, it's very easy to think metadata doesn't matter for much anymore and for many things metadata is no not no longer nearly as important as it was but one of the cool things with metadata now is you can actually give this particular uh, setting so what you do is you say HTTP hyphen equiv equals refresh 
So basically what we're saying is we want this web page to refresh. Then you say content equals, and then you put a number here. So this is every, how many seconds. So I'm having the page refresh every five seconds. If you wanted it to be refreshed every six, every minute, it would be 60 seconds. If you wanted it to be refreshed every 10 minutes, it would be 600 seconds, um, so on and so forth. Now, when you're thinking about the refresh time, you do have to think about how long your scripts will take to run or to fire. So sometimes when you have scripts run, they may take a significant amount of time they may take a couple of seconds to actually run so if if the refresh is too quick like let's say it takes a couple of seconds uh, for your script to go out to the databases all the different data sources bring information in, parse it and be able to show it up on a dashboard if you make the refresh time too quick you may start running into some very weird issues and basically timeouts because it, it's, it'll start to refresh itself before it's finished uh, trying to trying to do all of the PHP or whatever scripts there. So you do have to be careful. So when you're looking at this refresh, something to think about is if you make it too short, you may run into an issue where basically your scripts are not able to fully uh, perform themselves before you refresh, and therefore the information on the screen may be garbage. But also, if you make the refreshes too long, something may get locked up. Again, remember, this is the computer world. <laughs> Always expect something stupid to happen. So if you make the refresh cycle too long something may lock up and then people may not realize it because it takes so long to refresh again so if you're thinking about having this refresh every 10 or 20 minutes right if people are used to it only refreshing every 10 or 20 minutes then if they look at the if they look at the dashboard and it looks the same for a long time they may not realize that there's a problem with the dashboard itself again always remember when you're creating anything in the real world is expect what you built to fail too um, and so that's where I would say, like, if you're going to have an auto refresh das dashboard, do something like, I, I would say like every minute, maybe every 30 seconds, every minute, something like that. Again, if you make it too short, you run into problems. If you make it too long, uh, people might not realize that there is a problem. And this really, that's this right here, this one little line of code, that's all you need to have your HTML document auto refresh itself. So that's all you need to have your HTML document auto refresh itself. You just put that little meta, meta tag up in your head, HTTP hyphen equiv, refresh, content equals, again, however many seconds, um, and then go from there. Uh, the big warning that I would give you for this is before you deploy this to your end users, test it. I would test it for a couple of days at least, just to make sure you don't get into any weird quirks. Again, if, if it refreshes too quickly, you might run into issues where things haven't finished processing uh, before it auto refreshes itself again. And as I say, if it's too long, um, it may just lock up. You may run into some weird problem. And if people aren't expecting it to refresh very often, they won't notice. So that's where I would say, honestly, you think about it like every 20 seconds, 30 seconds, every minute, something like that so that people feel comfortable that uh, that it's doing what it's supposed to do. The other thing that I would argue is whenever you're going to be using this auto uh, refresh for a dashboard, think about putting a timestamp on the dashboard. Again, that's a very easy way that your end users will know that it actually has auto update itself, right? Because think about it, if you're looking at a dashboard and all the, all the information on the dashboard, 99.99% .99 of the time should should basically be pretty stagnant anyway, right? If, if your systems are good, if your environmental controls are good, if everything's good, then basically you should be saying just good green, as I say, green across the board. Well, the problem then is like, do you know that things are refreshing? Like do the end users really know that this is current information that might not be a problem? So if you have a timestamp, simply by having that timestamp and having that auto, that also update uh, when everything gets refreshed, that makes it a lot more comfortable for the end users. They can say, okay, uh, everything is still green and the timestamp has obviously refreshed itself. So, so I do know that this dashboard is giving me good new relevant information. Um, that's one of the things that you have to be thinking about whenever you code these projects. Uh, so that's all there is to it. Very simple thing, very useful in the real world. Uh, as always, I enjoy doing this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.
If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.